everyone, my name is Hannah Anbeter and uh, you may have found me through my YouTube channel or through my website or just because you were searching about hearts. Um, today I have some exciting stuff that I'm going to be doing and I wanted to be able to share it with you. I have here in this very big box um, a new harpsicle. Uh, to be specific, it is the um, fulsicle in the special edition cherry and I thought you might like to see me unbox it. And um, after that, I do have a couple harps that are more or less comparable peers, so I'll play them back to back so you can hear how they sound. Um, as I get started here, I will let you know that when this showed up, uh, I did hear a string pop about five minutes after it opened up, so I'm sure that at least one string will need some tender loving care and maybe a replacement. Um, it's not too difficult to replace strings, you just have to know what type of material you need. And um, if you don't know, people will, uh, people at your local harp store should be able to tell you. Um, so, uh, I'll tape at the bottom, hang on. There we go. Right, I'm not exactly sure how it's lying, so we'll find out. Oh, hello. You are upside down. No, uh, no place to sign up for this box, apparently. Alright, here we go. I'm going to tilt the camera down a little bit so you can see me try to unwrap it on the floor here. It's like opening Christmas presents, really. So, Alright, where's the tape on this fella? I have scissors. Scissors will solve anything. Alright. Oh, I'm so excited. I've heard of Harpsicle for years and years and years. I've never actually heard one live though before. So I'm hoping that this will just be a tune once I get it down to the bottom. Worst case, my cats will have lots of fun. So I got this harp off of uh, Amazon, which let me just say, first and foremost, be very careful about buying harps off of public marketplaces um, and definitely harps online. There are good brands, there are not so good brands, um, but uh, I have many colleagues who have been talking about how wonderful the harpsicle line is and there weren't any stores nearby where I could go to get it, so I decided to take a chance so you'll be surprised right along with me. Um, but off of Amazon, this was uh, $1,083, and I had prime shipping. Um, so that took care of that. There was taxes and all that. Um, I did also purchase a stick for $25 that I don't think is in that box. It might be in my mailbox. I'll have to go and check it out. All right. Down to one of the final layers. Woo! To, uh, hard to break in transit, so I'm not complaining too much. Okay. I see how you are now. And here we are. I guess I was wrong. All the strings are actually uh, intact. I wonder what it is that I heard. I'll find out one way or another. So here we have the um, cherry fulsicle here. And um, it's actually really pretty. I really like it. Um, so uh, with he being able to hear absolutely nothing about it so far, I'm expecting it to be horrible, hardly out of tune. Um, this is a 26 string lever harp. Uh, it is fully levered, um, so the harpsicles start out without being levered at all, and you may be able to see there in the background the fireside full carp, which I'll be playing for you as a compare and contrast, but the full carp doesn't uh, naturally come with levers either. This one's fully levered, 26 strings. Uh, I do recommend for any 
beginning harpist, whether or not they're um, just playing for a hobby or if they want to get into uh, very mobile Celtic sorts of traveling harping, um, that they have at least 26 strings because the minimum of harp music assumes 26 strings. So it's your, you know, why would you buy a car with three wheels sort of thing? You can buy it, but that's not really gonna get you very far. So um, the levers really help uh, if you're gonna be playing a lot of different keys. Um, let me see. Oh, that's special. <laughs> um, I'll tune that up off screen for you. Um, but uh, as you can see here, there are some pegs here so that you can be able to fit a strap over it. Um, ah, yes, and down here at the very, very bottom here, you can see there's a little hole. That's where I presume you you can screw a stick on and it sits perpendicular to the harp. So you can just put the stick on your lap like this and the harp won't slide off. So um, without further ado, I will have to find what snapped and uh, I will tune this harp up and hopefully go out to the mailbox and find the stick and I will be right back with you. Hi everyone, we're back um, the next day. Uh, I had to uh, delay my part two uh, because we actually had our studio spring recital last night and students started showing up. Um, so sadly, they got to uh, play the full sickle before I really got my fingers on it. Um, but I am back now. So all put together, here is the full sickle with the stick. Um, I like to retract what I said before about the stick. Um, this bottom hole is actually a screw. Whoops. Um, so the way that this stick works, there's a smaller uh, stick in the inside of the soundboard here and this wing that screws on uh, to hold this bigger one in place. So you can adjust the stick up or down depending on where you would like. And then it sits uh, like this between the knees. So um, it should be very comfortable. I'm still terrified of it, you know, falling forwards, but that's just, you know, you can feel if it's about to go. Um, the lever mechanism on this is actually really interesting. The more that I played around with it, so, um, let me bring this closer so you can see. Uh, if you see here, um, these strings are actually, uh, the way that the lever mechanism works is that you pull up on the peg and it actually rolls forwards against the string, which is actually really interesting because um, the uh, Kamak version, oh yeah, I apparently have a cat with me now. Um, the Kamak version uh, is the opposite where you push the string into it, uh, sorry, you push the lever up and it pushes backwards against the string. This is pushing forwards. So it's just interesting to note. Um, these are uh, a different type, of, uh, different type of levers. I can't remember which type off the top of my head. Um, but uh, something to note is that if you do want to put the uh, colored lever bands on these, um, I would be, I would personally be concerned about whether or not they're going to be buzzing against the levers, um, because I've heard that they're they fit a little bit more loosely over the harpsichord levers, uh, and since these are rolling directly against the string, I'm not sure how far down the bands might roll. So anyway, some experimentation. If any of you. Um, do you have the uh, colored levers, a colored band on your levers? Let me know whether or not they work out for, you know, posterity. So, um, as far as um, the harp itself goes, it's very, very light. Um, it's probably about six or seven pounds. Um, I think it's advertised as six, and then they add on the um, lever mechanisms, which of course adds some weight, so it's somewhere around seven pounds. Um, all the students last night were loving it. They were um, you know, from young to old, they were, um, go well, not old, but, uh, they were going back and forth, um, playing all the different types. So here is, um, the, uh, harpsicle, and I've tuned it to the key of E flat. So here we go.
um, something that I immediately noticed is um, the spacing on these is actually a little bit narrower than standard string spacing, uh, which is good for size, um, and it doesn't really affect me, um, but just to be aware of it, especially if you're going back and forth between instruments. Hey. Um, and uh, there's not really a whole lot of room at the bottom here. It's maybe about one, one finger's breadth through, and it's actually really narrow up here at the top. There's not a whole lot of room. I can fit in my pinky going sideways. So reaching this upper G with the right hand is really awkward. Um, you can still do it, but um, it would definitely take some, you know, getting to know the instrument. So, um, oh, the other thing is you can buy a stand for these guys. Um, I think it's like $40 for a floor stand. Um, but they do not stand upright on their own, which is you know, good to know. So as a comparison, here's the Fireside Full Carp. No levers, uh, it's tuned to the key of C. Um, I've played it on my other videos, but just so you can hear a direct sound comparison. this one neither of these have that warmth of the gut strings um, this one would be most compare uh, most comparable to the uh, dusty strings allegro I believe um, because they offer several 26 string harps um, these those ones are about 14 pounds they're about double the weight um, but they also have the larger sound box um, they do have legs that you can put down on the ground so it's a little bit of a trade-off uh, I wish I had that, but right now it's being rented out by one of my students. So, um, both of these have a little bit of a, um, tinny sound, I guess, but this one is more pingy, probably, because it has a cardboard soundboard. I mean, there's only so much you can do with cardboard. Um, whereas this one is a little bit more guitar-like. It has a little bit more of that metallic sound to it. I can't help but feel that this sounds a little bit more like a toy and this one sounds a little bit more like a barred instrument. It's a little bit more grown up. So I do prefer this. Um, there will be some decals on the way to come and decorate up the soundboard. But just um, so you can hear the difference between that one and a third harp, the Ogden, uh, which is a 34 string harp. And it's, uh, as you can see, quite a bit bigger, quite a bit heavier. Um, this one is also strung with gut. I believe you can get them strung with nylon, which would probably be a more uh, comparable sound. Um, but here's the Lyman Healy Ogden. material part of that is also definitely um, the size of the soundboard, um, the <laughs> size of the frame because it's all about the resonance that you can achieve with it. So um, I have here, this again will take some arranging. All right so I've moved some stuff around. Um, I thought that I would play for you uh, this piece called Flying Free by Anne Crosby Gaudet. And uh, I believe it is meant for a 26 string lever harp. And already this has an advantage over the harpsicle and the sharpsicle because it has flats. Um, so I've gone ahead and uh, put up the flats necessary um, or down as necessary uh, to play this piece, which is in the key of F. 
Um, I can also just as easily switch to G major, which has sharps in it. So full school is awesome. So here's flying free. <laughs> to get a warm tone out of it. Um, as you can hear, I did make a couple mistakes. Um, that is, uh, I figured out one, because of the string spacing, it's a little bit unusual for me. Um, two, the strings are actually uh, significantly rendered out of line when you have the lovers engaged. Um, because the string is pushed forwards by the lever mechanism. So it looks a little bit weird. Um, I'm sure that I would get used to it very quickly if I was playing on it, but just like, whoa, that's not where I expected you to be. Uh, let me see if I can find another one for you to hear. Um, so, Butterfly Dreams. <laughs> that I normally uh, play to kind of um, hear the different ranges of the harps and it is um, White Rose by Christina Torin.
uh, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. This is the Fulsicle and the special um, cherry edition. Um, overall, you know, considering its niche and what it's meant to do, I really like it. Um, you know, it claims that it's uh, it can fit in the overhead bins on airplanes. Uh, whether or not you would be able to argue for it to, um, to take up so much room is another matter, but... Um, it's uh it's very lightweight it's portable um i could take it outside if it wasn't raining and play it out there and i wouldn't um have to you know worry about it being on the ground or setting up the extra legs um so so the uh the pro no those are the pros of it cons are i'm not really a fan of how far forward the string is pushed when the levers are up um it takes the strings out of alignment I also wish that there was a little bit more um, navigation room at the top and bottom of the harp. Um, it's also hard to get a really warm, uh, resonant sound out of this. Um, on the other hand, <laughs> um, considering that the, uh, to the best of my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, but the uh, next cheapest harp is the Fireside Harp. Um, that is a very modest price of $150. Um, that has a cardboard soundboard and it sounds rather pingy. This at least sounds dignified. It's a lot more of a um, bardic guita um, guitar, metallic type sound. I could get very used to it. Um, it also has the narrower spacing, which is great if this is going to be your primary instrument and, um, and or you're very good at switching back and forth between harps. But if this is a transition instrument for you or um, you do switch between harps quite casually, uh, it might be an issue. So there, you know, would just have to be a, you know, now I'm on this harp, now I'm on this harp sort of thing. So, uh, hopefully that is helpful to you and best of luck in your harping.